new age spirituality is regarded as somewhat feminine and is certainly by and large commodified it becomes about you know purchasing a pair of leggings purchasing a dream catcher or a crystal it doesn't have that aspect of discipline that is about the ability to prioritize your spiritual state over your physical state yes. this is the deeper reality what's happening in here and when you start bringing up interdimensional travel and psychedelics you start to recognize yeah no this is an important space for me interesting too the way that the arguments around sex and gender have altered because you know, for what uh, you know, like the uh, Andrew Tate phenomena has been an interesting one, but I've heard you talk about the sort of, you know, and certainly while they're outstanding crimes, I certainly wouldn't comment in, on any of those things and how they might play out. But if you leave a space in the culture where masculinity can be sort of embraced, loved, revered, celebrated, then different models are going to emerge that yes. take up that territory rather than looking at... the masculinity isn't solely ugly it just shouldn't be connected to misogyny it did the masculinity right. and misogyny it, it shouldn't be that in somehow or another you in order to be masculine you have to hate women that's just so ridiculous that's so dumb that's not real masculinity either that's a foolish version of it that is set up for children it's set up for dullards it's, it doesn't make any sense like true masculinity like it, you first of all like, what does that even mean like just being whoever the fuck you are and if you happen to be a man there you're is going right. to be certain things that you have you're going to have a certain amount of aggression you have a certain amount of anxiety you have a protection instincts and you've got to have control over as much of your body and mind as you can and what's the best way to do that? Well, you have to experience adversity, and you have to you have to execute with discipline. You have to be able to do that on a regular basis. If you don't, you're not going to trust yourself. You're not going to count on yourself. You're always going to have anxiety. You're always going to have to wonder whether or not you could pull through it. Like one of the things about cold or sauna or exertion, physical exercise, is knowing you can force yourself to do it. Knowing you can force yourself to do it. These little battles. Of forcing yourself to do something there's so many people out there that don't do that they don't know whether they can force themselves to do something they don't know how to not quit they don't know how to push themselves when they don't want to yeah that's why there has to be a spiritual component to life and that's why a culture that abdicates that responsibility and abstracts that reality becomes kind of nihilistic and yeah. celebrates meaninglessness yeah. and it becomes only about furniture and an aesthetic yeah. there's nothing real it's got nothing behind it we can yeah. sort of feel that now i think that it's been hollowed out from within the institutions are hollow because there's no values there mm -hmm. like and like i alluded to earlier the idea of a sort of a potentially senile and decaying president is like the culture is unconsciously telling you what it is look it's falling apart there are no real values behind it they'll say that a war is humanitarian when we know that most likely the imperatives are economic imperatives and one way to find out would be to extract the economic imperatives then you would find out so like the service that i suppose that i i don't pay enough attention to when someone's given enough credence to is the possibility that you can reach individuals through a media like this and say that actually what you do is important what you believe in the way you treat yourself the way you talk to yourself the practices you undertake i mean when you bring in one of the goliaths in that space like goggins dave goggins someone who transformed themselves in ways I don't even understand still from a 300 pound person on a couch to a at the absolute ultimate end of what is possible to be militarily is demonstration of that and I suppose that what must be happening as well as like the identity where you come at odds with the culture it's observable like you know like the I've met in moment it's like oh shit what you said there well, that the mainstream don't like that and push back and crackle but like elsewhere there must be thousands millions of messages about self-discipline awakening do things for your body eat healthily awaken take responsibility for yourself masculinity and femininity are, can cohabit successfully it should never be about misogyny all these ideas are reaching out there and they're reaching people that wouldn't typically be getting i, yes. I would say such nuanced takes on their signals ideas. but people have to act on those signals and that's the difference there's a lot of those messages that are getting out there but how many of them reach a person to the point where that person decides to act yeah. The acting is what's most important because the only lessons that you really generate from this stuff is actually engaging. 
actually taking the yoga class, actually going for the run, actually doing the CrossFit, actually doing jujitsu, actually doing something. It's so hard to actually do something. It's one of the great problems that people have. And it's one of the reasons why there's so many hucksters out there that are selling motivation. There's yeah. so many people out there that are they're motivational speakers. And meanwhile, they've done nothing. Yeah. They've done nothing of great note, nothing of great accomplishment. And all they're doing is they're finding this, this thing that people desire and they're, they're feeding it to people. Like yeah. either giving a motivation. And those people, oftentimes you'll check in on them five years from now, 10 years from now. They're not doing anything any different. Yeah, that's right. Because it's action. You have to take action. You have to take the action, and it usually involves suffering and yes, sacrifice. Yes, And that's a, that's a hard thing to sell. People don't want that now, do they? They don't want that information. Like, you can tell people there's a quick fix in an easy way, but whether it's getting off drugs, becoming a stand-up comedian, or doing, yes. like, or accomplishing stuff in a martial art, normally it means, like, you, incrementally, day by day, hour by hour, session by session, you are going to experience a degree of suffering, whether it's yes. physical. Or, the, you know, like, early stand-up, when you can't do it, and you have to stand up for an audience, and be shit and bomb in front of people and, the, and then like, oh, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do it again. Like, that is unavoidable. And I, like, I suppose I don't want to only use the markers that are sanctioned as success, things that might bring you financial success because God knows there are other ways of succeeding in yeah. this world and truly, truly great people that don't enjoy the accolades of a culture that celebrates many, many things that I think are pretty vacuous. But on the level of the individual, as you say, if you're not willing to go to the mat or the, to the open mic or to the wherever it is wherever you practice... Is. Yeah. Yeah, you got to do something. You got to take action. And so many people are just stagnant and they don't know how to act and they, they don't have experience doing it. And so they don't, they just stay home. And again, the disembodiment thing, they, they put on headsets or they sit in front of the computer or they sit in front of the television or they sit in front of their phone and they don't act. And you're going to be depressed. That's not good for you. It's not a natural, normal way for people to, to behave. And this thing that people do where they avoid discomfort it sounds ridiculous, but then it just creates more discomfort. You don't realize that in embracing discomfort and forcing yourself to do something very uncomfortable that you can control, like an ice bath, like a sauna, like a run, like a, a workout, you are eliminating another form of discomfort. You can do that. It's one of the reasons why I've been able to mitigate all the stress and, and issues that come with success and with fame. It's like I fucking torture myself. I torture myself physically. I'm always working out. I'm always exhausted. I'm always taking ice baths. I took a, I was in the sauna before I got here today. I'm always doing something. Always. I never have a day where there's not some kind of struggle. If I have a day where I just lay around, I'm like, this is weird. Like one day, like it's one of the things that I have to do on vacation. When I get up in the morning, whenever I'm on vacation, the first thing I do is work out. I'm like, I got to do this. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to enjoy this time off with my family. I got to get up before everybody else, and I got to work out hard. 